Hello biologists! This is the video to study for quiz 3.15 and 3.17 about photosynthesis and cellular respiration, the energy of life. Studying how organisms get energy is very important in biology because all organisms <clears throat> require energy to survive whether you're an insect or a bacteria or a plant or a fungi you need energy how do you get energy to survive well you intake the sugar glucose remember we talked about that in unit two and you get that from eating plants or eating animals that have eaten plants or if you're a vegetarian you just get it from eating plants and some of those plants might be processed into things like tofu to concentrate the protein. Since plants cannot go look for food, they don't take glucose in, they have to make their own glucose. So plants use sunlight to combine carbon dioxide from the air and water to make glucose. Most of the mass of all of these plants is carbon dioxide and water. That carbon dioxide comes out of the air. So a lot of the mass of plants is actually air out of the air that they take in. They make glucose. They store the energy of the sun as glucose in their leaves. Here's a, this plant right here is a soybean and you can see the soybean leaves are green and they're storing glucose. How does the soybean use the glucose? It doesn't just make it for animals to eat, it uses its own glucose. All plants use their own glucose and they convert that glucose into the energy currency of cells, which is ATP. The soybean plant here uses cellular respiration to make ATP from the glucose that it made from made using the energy of the sun. So remember, you get energy to survive by intaking glucose from plants or animals, but plants have to make that glucose themselves using the energy of the sun, carbon dioxide, and water. Which of the following organisms need glucose to survive? Plants, animals, bacteria, fungi, or E, all of the above. And if you guessed all of the above, you were absolutely correct. This lizard here needs glucose. It's green, but it's not a plant. How do plants, animals, bacteria, and fungi use the, that glucose for energy? Do they make ATP in the cell, digest glucose in the stomach, bond glucose molecules to each other, bond glucose to fructose, or E, I don't know. If you guessed make, make ATP, you are correct. They make ATP in the cell. All plants, animals, bacteria, and fungi make ATP. Here's the chemical equation showing the chemical reaction of photosynthesis. Over here, these are the reactants. That's what's at the beginning of the equation. This is what plants need. They need carbon dioxide and water. They use light to power the reaction, and they make glucose and oxygen as products. That's the end of the reaction is products. So remember, CO2 is carbon dioxide. H2O is water. The reaction is powered by light energy from the sun. It makes glucose, which is sugar, a type of sugar, and oxygen. Here's an overview, a visual overview of photosynthesis. The plant takes in carbon dioxide through its leaves. It brings in water through the roots. The glucose is stored in the leaves and other parts of the plant and the plant gets rid of the oxygen. It's a byproduct. Plants don't need the oxygen until they do cellular respiration. And the oxygen is a byproduct that's very handy for humans and other animals. 
Remember, the products of photosynthesis are glucose, a type of sugar, which is energy for the plants or anything else that eats the plants, and oxygen, which is used by many other living things. What do you notice about the cellular respiration equation? Cellular respiration is what happens when organisms break down glucose for energy. Here's the glucose. Here's oxygen. They're the beginning of the reaction. They're the reactants. At the end of the cellular respiration equation, there's water, carbon dioxide, plus energy for the organism. Look carefully at this equation and see if you notice how it relates to photosynthesis. Here are both equations. Photosynthesis starts with carbon dioxide and water. Cellular respiration ends with water and carbon dioxide. Plus energy is a product of cellular respiration. In photosynthesis, we have to add light energy to make the reaction go. In cellular respiration, when we break down glucose, we get that energy back. So what are the reactants here in photosynthesis are the products here. For cellular respiration to occur, you need glucose, the sugar, and oxygen. Here are some lines connecting the products of photosynthesis are the reactants of cellular respiration. And same goes for the reactants of photosynthesis are the products of cellular respiration. The two equations are running in reverse. Notice oxygen, you need oxygen to get cellular respiration to work and you produce oxygen as a product of photosynthesis. So now, if the cell has run out of ATP, what might have happened? Did the cell run out of oxygen? Is ATP not being delivered by the bloodstream? ATP is not diffusing? The sun is not shining? Or you don't know? If the cells run out of ATP, it might be because there's no oxygen. Remember, you can't produce ATP, you can't do cellular respiration without oxygen. That's why your body has a circulation system to deliver oxygen to all of your cells constantly. Respiration happens in plants and animals. Remember, plants break down their own glucose. They only store the energy of the sun as glucose. When they need energy, they break it down in cellular respiration just like we do. They just store the energy in glucose. When they need to use it, they make it into ATP. Plants, animals, and other organisms like bacteria and fungi convert glucose to ATP. Glucose is a, um, a monosaccharide, it's a sugar with one ring, and they make it into ATP. And it's a pretty complicated process, which we won't go over here, but you can certainly research it on the web. Remember about respiration. Plants do respiration too. They break down glucose. They break down the glucose that they make, storing the energy of sunlight by combining carbon dioxide and water into glucose. When plants do cellular respiration, when they break down that glucose, they actually need a little oxygen because they are doing respiration. But remember, plants are also producing oxygen when they do photosynthesis. Plants don't need oxygen to do photosynthesis. So the three key concepts about photosynthesis and respiration. Who needs the glucose? Well, everybody. Where's the oxygen? Everybody needs oxygen when they do cellular respiration. Plants don't need oxygen to do photosynthesis. They need carbon dioxide when they're doing photosynthesis. The products of photosynthesis are the reactants of cellular respiration. Or you could reverse that statement as well. They're, op they're reactions running in reverse. All organisms require what to survive? We went over at this beginning. Remember, all organisms require energy. How does a cougar get energy to survive? 
Do they do extreme sunbathing? Do they eat plants? Eat animals that eat plants? Eat mushrooms? Or you didn't eat your Wheaties this morning, so you don't remember? Well, cougars usually eat animals that eat plants. They might eat plants, they might eat mushrooms in extreme situation, but mostly they're going to eat animals that have eaten plants. What form of energy do living things use as fuel? Did they use mechanical energy, like uh, you use to push yourself across the room by walking? Chemical energy, like eating chemicals and breaking them down for energy? Nuclear energy? Heat energy? or E, I'm going to study harder. The basic form of energy that living things use as fuel to create the other kinds of energy they might need, like mechanical or heat, is they take in chemical energy of glucose and they break it down into these other forms of energy. Not nuclear energy, heat and mechanical energy. Why are webbed feet a good idea for ducks, but not for cats? This is a structure function question. Webbed feet help ducks swim efficiently and cats don't swim well. B, webbed feet look better in orange and yellow. Cats usually have black feet. Webbed feet are good for climbing trees. Webbed feet help groom duck feathers. Cats don't have feathers. Or E, you're going to study more before this quiz. Well, that structure function idea is webbed feet help ducks swim more efficiently and cats just don't need to swim well. We know that this is a desert plant because it has small leaves. Small leaves help plants not lose water in the desert. Over here in the rainforest, this banana tree has large leaves. So if you want to know about structure function relationship in plants, look at the size of the leaves. How do you tell the teeth of a carnivore from an herbivore? Well, this cat here has sharp pointy teeth for tearing meat. This elephant here has large grinding teeth for chewing up plants. So this cat here is going to hang on to its prey with those sharp teeth and rip it up. This elephant here is going to grind up grass with its large flat teeth. Thanks for watching. Good luck on your quiz. This is Miss R, Biology, signing off.